All right. So welcome back, Winter Circle. Week three of 52, day 19 of 365. Week three's theme in the Winter Circle is practice, which I think is juicy. I'm going to read Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm going to read five days worth of readings because I'm a little behind. I've been interviewing 300 applicants for Love City Island, and I've brought on about 10 employees. So life has kind of changed over the matter of the last week, and I'm very grateful, but that's a bit of the reason why I'm behind and been out of pocket a little bit on some other things. But my DMs are still open and my phone number hasn't changed, so we'll be okay. Good morning to Beetlejuice, Timothy Day, Gerald, Gerald, sorry, uh, Ol, Riley, or Ol Riley. Thanks for stopping by. I hope that you get some encouragement this morning um, over at the coffee. When I began studying martial arts, I felt awkward about the moves I was learning. Can you give me a book? I asked my instructor. I need a set of rules to tell me exactly how to do this so I know when I'm getting it right. You don't need to read a book, he said. Keep practicing. You may not always know when you're doing it wrong, but you'll know when you get it right. The first sip of the day is always the best. Applying the appropriate value to a given situation requires practice. Sometimes we need to practice patience in a particular relationship. On the other hand, there's a point when we need to practice setting a boundary and saying, that's enough and that's it. When we do need to let go a little more and when we have let go too much. Some situations require us to express our feelings like anger or sadness. At what point, however, have we mucked about in our upset feelings too long, refusing to forgive someone? Question mark. When is tolerance the life-giving value of the day? And when have we tolerated enough? I'll say that one more time. When is tolerance the life-giving value of the day? And when have we tolerated enough? What about prayer and faith? How much time do we spend on our knees with our hands folded talking to God? Question mark. On the other hand, when we do get up, and we do something ourselves, take an appropriate action to help and change our own lives. How about using intuition? When do we rely on what feels right? And when do we use good old rational thought instead? There are no hard, fast rules in life for which values to apply and when. Calling on our personal values can be puzzling and confusing and we may do a lot of our learning by trial and error. Learning which value to apply can feel like hit and miss. Most of the time, I'm not learning what I think I'm learning anyway. Something different is taking place, something deeper. It's as if the universe gives us something to occupy what writer Natalie Goldberg calls the monkey mind, so we can move forward on our path. Just keep practicing the values you know. Stay open to learning something new, folks. Practice might not make us perfect, but it will help us progress. Or progress. It will help us progress along our path. And in any situation we find ourselves, it'll give us something beneficial to do. Just keep practicing the values you know. Stay open to learning something new. Practice may not make us perfect, but it will help us progress along our path. And in any situation we find ourselves, it'll give us something beneficial to do. This week, we'll explore the consistent practice of the values we find meaningful in our lives. When we focus on our values, we improve the quality of our daily lives. And when we encounter a challenge, we'll have a better idea of what value to apply. Uh, day two, keep throwing values at the problem. Eventually, something will stick. Consider each day of your life as an opportunity to consciously learn, practice, and apply values that are important to you. Usually the situations that require us to practice our values feel most difficult. All right. 
moving right along to day three's reading. This week's uh, value that we are working to practice in our community cohort, uh, in our personal development process as a team, uh, is practice. Day three, it's easy to become lazy and complacent, but living our values requires daily practice. It's also tempting to compartmentalize our lives. Oh, I believe in values like honesty and surrender, we say, but this part of my life is me. Or it doesn't occur to us that principles like powerlessness, turning a struggle over to higher power, and praying for God's will for us might work in financial, work, and relationship problems. I'll say that one more time. Or it doesn't occur to us that the principles like powerlessness, turning a struggle over to higher power, and praying for God's will for us might work in a financial work and relationship problem. The challenge of the week as it relates to this value of practice is that the biggest challenge is to consistently practice values. We have to stop luxuriating in being victims. We have to stop luxuriating in being victims and take responsibility for ourselves. Practicing values means the ball is always in our court. I got to pause here. This is so good. The coffee's good and the reading's good today. It really is. We have to stop luxuriating in being victims. It's so easy to go, oh, my life is not perfect. My life is not coming together. Everything's not working out. Woe is me. Where's my boyfriend? Where's my girlfriend? Where's my new job? Where's my new opportunity? Why is no one paying attention to me? They really don't care, you know. There's so many narratives that we play in our minds and to ourselves about our lives that move from a victim consciousness. We have to stop luxuriating and basking and, and, and you know, making um, big of, of what a victim we are. You know, laying back and just... I'm such a victim. I'm so powerless. I can't, I can't do this. I can't do that. We have to stop being a victim in our own lives and take responsibility for ourselves. Practicing our values means that the ball of life, the responsibility of making your dream come true, it's always in your court. The responsibility of making your dream come true is not uh, for me. Uh, it's not for your mama, it's not for your daddy, it's not for your relatives, it's not for your husband, it's not for your wife, it's not for your lover, it's not for your friends. The responsibility of making your dream come true, folks, um, on this third week of the year, 19th day of the year, that responsibility lies on us. And this should not be something that puts us in a panicky place. It should put us in a place of power. I'm no longer going to be a victim in my life. I'm going to take control. And take responsibility. And y'all know, those of you who come here often know that I define responsibility, if you break it apart, as the ability to respond to any situation. I want you to know today that you personally have the ability to respond to any situation in your life. Sometimes life will, will be, uh, sometimes life will feel out of control and unmanageable. Um, but I want you to know that you have an ability to respond positively and pleasantly everything that's happening to you and around you. Day four. When my son died, I didn't want to play the game anymore. His death broke every rule I thought was important. His death hurt my trust, not my faith in God. His death hurt my trust, not my faith in God. It wasn't that I didn't believe in God anymore. I absolutely believed in God, but I also related to the words of C.S. Lewis. So this is what God is really like. We're all in the game, whether we like it or not. It's a game called cause and effect. And that's a, that's a spiritual principle and a spiritual law. We can talk about that some other time. But the law of cause and effect is a real, real thing in the universe. If you've ever studied, studied the Kabbalion or any of the, the ancient spiritual text, um, cause and effect is a thing. Who's emailing me? Okay. We're all in this game, whether we like it or not. It's a game called cause and effect. If we don't play by the rules, live by the values, we're going to reap the consequences of living that way. 
We may have been hurt in life, but not practicing our values hurts other people and it hurts us. The inventory focus of this week around the theme of practice is if you are recovering from alcoholism or addiction, are you attending meetings and working the steps? Question mark. If codependency issues are a problem, are you paying attention to them in recovery? If you're not addicted and not codependent, do you have any formal or informal regular practice to help you stay spiritually in shape and on track? And so just go within yourself right now on the day four reading and ask yourself, you know, do I have a formal or informal practice to help me spiritually stay in shape and on track? Y'all know that I have a playlist that I play every morning. I've been playing it every morning for the last, well, since, since the year started. It, it has, I ain't stressed in the day. I ain't stressed in the day. Bounce. It has that on it. And I just play that every day. And that helps me just focus on what's important to me spiritually. Can you tell that my coffee's loading? Got another Andre in here. Andre Lima. Un placer con recepte. I love a Andre. My name, my name, our name means bold and courageous and brave. And we are Andre Lima. So yeah, what are you using in your life to stay formally or informally in spiritual shape? Are you, y'all know me. I'm not, you know, I used to be a really religious person for decades and now it's kind of like, man. I believe that if the only prayer you pray all day and every day is two words, thank you, that's enough. If the only words you pray the entire day is thank you, thank you. And if you want to get really fancy, you say thank you for. And then fill in the blank with whatever you want to say thank you for. I don't really care what you think. Uh, sorry. Well, I don't care what you think. That was like a, for, a Freudian slip. Uh, I don't care what you think. And I also uh, don't care what you're thankful for. Or I don't care who you think. Um, it is the practice of gratitude and the living through gratitude that actually allows everything good to actually come into your life. And even if nothing good, quote unquote good, I think breathing is good. But even if nothing good comes into your life, you still have gratitude that you're carrying with you. You just feel good about everything that's happening. You find a contentment inside when you're moving in gratitude. All right. This has been a long reading because we're catching up. Um, but I'm grateful for your presence, Sunflower. I'm grateful for everybody, all of the nearly 70 people over on Vigo who are tuning in for the magic. Remember, uh, we're reading from 52 Weeks of Conscious Contact. This is a book for addicts um, and people who struggle with heaviness in life. It's based around the 12-step traditions of Alcoholics Anonymous. So you may hear some of this higher power and God language and addiction stuff happening. I believe that we're all addicted to something, even if the thing that we're addicted to is simply stinking thinking. Anybody know about stinking thinking? Anybody ever heard of stinking thinking? Meaning I'm using my Southern accent for this, the stinking thinking. It's, it's that negativity that we carry with us when we don't think that life is working out in a way that suits us. Um, some of us are addicted to stinking thinking. So whether you have an alcohol issue or a drug issue or a life issue, there is a presence of peace here for you. And there's love here for you. And we're going to this year work through these things together. It's only the 19th day of this fresh baby year. We're only in week number three out of 52 of this year. There's so much opportunity as there's always been for you to get your shit together. <laughs> And I'm working on getting my shit together as well. This is the year that we stop playing small. This is the year that we stop hiding. This is the year that we stop shrinking. This is the year that we get our shit together. Anybody with me on this? This is the year that we actually see the beautiful manifestations and alignment of everything you've been working for and praying for. It's, it's now. If not now, then when? Right? If not now, then when? I got to hurry up because my staff is waiting on me because I promised them some answers and I haven't gotten back to that yet. 
but it's okay. We're, we're living through and with the present moment. Brett, Andre, Eugene, Sunflower, we're moving through the present moment. If I pass away in 15 minutes, I want to be very grounded. I want to make sure that I enjoy the sip of this coffee. If I just, people drop dead every day. We're breathing, but somebody isn't. We're breathing, but somebody's taking their last breath. Someone's getting, someone's getting disconnected from life support right now. As we speak, somebody is getting disconnected from life support. They're leaving this plane. They're crossing, uh, I don't mean to laugh about it, but they're crossing the rainbow bridge. And here we are. Beautiful humans, lovable humans. For what? For what are we here? You can tell the coffee's getting good now. I'm waking up. Starting to fire. Day five. Because Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I think today is still... Is today Thursday? Yes, today is Thursday. Great. It happened in my first year or two of sobriety. The old part of me took over, and I couldn't think of one good reason in the world not to drink. I called the sponsor, a mentor in the program. You're powerless over alcohol, and if you drink, your life becomes unmanageable, said my sponsor, paraphrasing the first step of Alcoholics Anonymous. I was one of a little spider. Hi, little spider. Hi, little guy. Little baby spider. If you drink, you may either die, go to jail, or go insane. How's that for a reason not to drink? <laughs> You're powerless over alcohol, and if you drink, your life becomes unmanageable, said my sponsor, paraphrasing the first step of Alcoholics Anonymous. If you drink, you may either die, go to jail, or go insane. How's that for a reason not to drink? Question mark. <laughs> That's good enough reason for me, I said. Sometimes practicing a value means taking only a moment of our time to focus on that truth. What are you focusing on today, people? Where's, where is your brain taking you? Where's your energy taking you? Where's your spirit taking you? The action step of this week as we focus on the theme of practice. You don't have to overwhelm or overexert yourself. You don't have to become fanatical or go to extremes, but instead of always allowing your thoughts and behaviors to be spontaneous and random, why not at least occasionally consciously focus on and practice a value instead, a positive value? You don't have to be so monkey mind, as we were talking about in the earlier reading today. You don't have to be so monkey mind. You don't have to be so dazed and confused and overwhelmed. You can take a moment, and maybe the value you're practicing today is love. Maybe the value that you're practicing today is patience. Maybe the value you're practicing today is grace and understanding. Maybe you're just settling into a deeper, profound self-love today. Maybe the value you're practicing is grace and self-love. Maybe the value you're practicing today is compassion for yourself and for others. I don't know what value you're practicing today. I mind my business and drink my water, but you don't have to be so spontaneous and random and just all over the place about your thoughts and emotions and feelings. One day soon, we'll talk about feelings and how feelings kind of drag us by our nose, like a hook through the nose. Like our feelings just drag us. From the time we wake up in the morning to the time we go to bed, our feelings, some for some of us, our feelings are just dragging us around through life. You can take dominion over your feelings, though, folks. You can tell your feelings how to feel. Hallelujah. You can tell your feel. Did y'all know that? That you can tell your feelings how to feel? You can say, hello, feelings. Hello, feelings. I want positive vibrations today. Hello, feelings. Knock, knock, feelings. I want to feel powerful today. 
you can go to yourself in the mirror and high five yourself and say, yo, you're doing a great job. I'm feeling great today. It's a vibe. And you don't have to be so random and spontaneous and all willy nilly with life. You can actually focus on love. You could take a moment, even right now, just focus on the abundance of love in our lives. We're hurling through the galaxy at thousands of miles per hour. And yet here we sit in love because we want to. We're hurling, we're literally scientifically hurling through the galaxy, through the Milky Way at thousands of miles per hour. Welcome back, Beetlejuice. We are hurling through this galaxy and somehow the law of gravity, like the law of cause and effect, is just keeping us where we're supposed to be for such a time as this. But like I said earlier, some people are taking their last breath, but we're still breathing. So my question to you as we begin to end this thing is what are you going to do with your day to day? I'll be back tomorrow to to read day six. We'll get back into the groove of this while my business is taking off and going bananas. What are you focusing on today? What's pulling you forward? Where is the love in your life? What are you wanting to manifest? And how are you going to love yourself more deeply? And these are not questions that I'm asking of you, Sunflower and Beetlejuice and Colin and Tomas Morales. Un placer conocerte. This is not something that I'm putting out into the world and not taking responsibility for myself. Like, what do I want to manifest? How do I want to be? What do I want to use the law of attraction to call into me? All of you are here right now engaging in my energy because the law of attraction said so. Something about our energies and our magic is just drawing us together. We have to rely on that. We have to trust in that. We have to allow it to pull us towards deeper levels of love and blessing. Where is love calling you today? Where is love calling you? There's so many different things calling us, folks. There's so many different. They my, my, I had to put my. I had to put my. Uh, my devices and do not disturb because so many things and so many people were calling me. But where is love calling you? Where is love calling you? So as we practice this week's uh, theme of practice, using the theme of the first week of the journey and the quest, wherever you're going in your journey and your quest in life, Just recognize it as a practice. Recognize it as something that you have to continually come back to. Or No one is perfect. No one always gets it right. I'm not perfect. I don't always get it right. But how do we come back to the practice of living love and the living of our dreams in our life? Open question. I don't have any answers. That's for you to decide. And you're very, very powerful. And you're very, very awesome. So you'll have no problem figuring out the things in life that you need to figure out to have your best life and manifest all your dreams. I hope that you have a great Thursday. It's the 19th day of this calendar year. The third week out of 52 weeks in the year. I hope that you're setting your mind and your heart on the things that you really desire. I hope that you're not giving so much attention to the unpleasantness of your life. I hope that you're finding a a platform of contentedness and gratitude and that from that content place and that gratitude place, your cup will run over. I pray today that your cup runs over with love. In the same way that my cup is filled with coffee, I hope that your cup is filled with love today. It is your birthright. It's who you are. Love is who you are. Love is where you came from. Love is where you're going to return. When mommy and daddy got together in a dark corner somewhere, or maybe a lit one if they were kinky, when mama and daddy got together, they came together in an act of love, creating you. And so from love you came, and to love you will return one day. And I'm grateful about it.
I'm very grateful. All right. I don't know how long I've been talking, but it is well with my soul. If you want to tap in with me, um, I'm here on Vigo every day. Um, if you'd like to get closer in my winner circle uh, cohort, personal development program to grow your dreams and to grow your love and to grow your magic, ain't got shit to do with me because y'all know I'm over here hustling and growing my own shit. You know, I'm um, having fun about it finally again. Um, but if you want to tap into your magic and your love and your truth and your power, um, just send me a DM and we'll get you into all of the programs for accountability and support for your dreams. AndreForHire.com, AndreSmith.net. Okay. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you around the metaverse. Sunflower, keep shining. Beetlejuice, keep shining. Tomas, keep shining. Colin, keep shining. Everybody else, all the 70 people that are over here uh, on the Beagle live stream, keep, keep projecting positivity and love into the world. It will come back to you tenfold. I'm not telling you something that I heard. I'm telling you something that I know. What you put out into the world, positive or negative, comes back to you tenfold. Some people call it karma. You would call it shamblama ding dong. What you give in the world, what you cause in the world has an effect. Laws of resonance and things. The reason why you can hear me right now is because it's a law of vibration that's happening. My voice is vibrating and then it's hitting your ears and then that's vibrating. And the law of vibration is making all of this work. That's a law. If, if, my, if I didn't vibrate and you didn't vibrate in here, there'd be no connection. So the law of vibration is just doing all of the work. You can chill out. You can really chill out because the law of attraction, the law of vibration, it's all vibes, right? The vibes are what's causing the love. The vibes is what's manifesting the dream. The vibe is what's making the shit pop. It's wonderful here. It really is. Have a great day. May you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be free of all suffering. May you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be free of all suffering. May you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be free of all suffering. And may love hold you in its big, 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 big hands. Have a great day, everybody.